are crazy fun, but they're not fast enough. I need something with real speed. Where am I? Is this a high speed train? Well, no one's here. So let's see how fast this thing can go. Whoa! <laughs> I have never driven anything so fast in my life. What is this thing made of? China's high-speed railway speed is picking up, like China's economic development in the last four decades. Currently, their running speed can reach between 300 to 350 kilometers per hour almost comparable to an F1 car hurtling down a straight path at top speed. Statistics show that in 2008, China's high-speed railway network measured 6,415 kilometers, and by 2018, the network measured 29,000 kilometers in total, accounting for 64.4% of the world's total high-speed railway length, and surpassing the combined network length of all the other countries in the world. A World Bank's research report reveals that due to high-speed railways' proximity to city centers and great comfort and reliability, they're more competitive than air travel. By 2019, China's high-speed trains have transported 9 billion passengers, and the total passenger volume occupies 60.4% of the entire network. High-speed railways have become China's main means of train travel. China is also constructing a lot of new airports and, of course, expressways. But people are not uh, drawing attention to that because the Chinese high-speed railway is a new thing. The high-speed railway itself has a unique um, advantage compared to airplanes and, uh, and highways when the travel distance is within 1,200 kilometers. China is a very large country and with very large population densities, especially across the eastern uh, corridors. So there's the availability of uh, very dense uh, population corridors provides uh, an opportunity for China to build a network uh, of high-speed railways. I was just at the high speed railway and now I'm not really sure where I am. After everything you said, I still don't understand why high-speed trains travel so fast. Not only can China's high-speed trains travel through the chilling plateaus, they can also withstand high temperature and intense heat, all thanks to China's hard technology. Over the last decade, Foreign technology has been introduced and then independently innovated. China's high-speed railways now boast independently innovated hard technology, such as seamless railway tracks, ballastless tracks, and high-speed junctions. China's independently researched and developed high-speed locomotives experience 4% less drag than the D-series high-speed trains, saving about 600 gigawatt hours each year. High-speed railways supporting facilities are also highly technical. In China, compared to applicants from other countries, the country's high-speed railway patent applications have clear advantage. Among them, applications for operation and maintenance technology occupy the highest percentage, with 91.2%. Real high speed train? Whoa, this is awesome! 
the high-speed railway of China is acting as a leading role in this aspect, like in the basic physics or chemistry or mechanics, met metallurgy and machinery and all these kind of uh, aspects. I think there is quite a lot that other countries can uh, learn from um, China's experience in high-speed railway development and other uh, transportation development that China has done. The uh, cost of high-speed railway here in China is significantly lower than um, what we see in Europe and what people estimate could cost in the U.S. as well. The high-speed railway here in China costs 40 percent lower. In Western countries, most of the railways are planned and constructed and owned and, I mean, operated by private companies and enterprises. So this has brought a, a series of problems like ununified um, standards and a relatively high price because they have to uh, add more cost in the maintenance work. But in China, we have kept at a relatively low price. It has been like almost 20 years. China's high-speed railway development may be astonishing, but its income isn't ideal. Apart from the Beijing-Shanghai and Beijing-Guangzhou high-speed railways that have been extensively exploited, other high-speed railways are greatly underused and generating severe losses. The Lanzhou-Xinjiang high-speed railway only operates four pairs of trains daily, whose income can't even cover the electricity. According to statistics, in 2018, China Railway's total debt was about 75 million U.S. dollars, which is about 5.8 percent of China's annual GDP that year. Considering the, the gross liabilities, the increasing rate of the gross um, liabilities of the, of the railway construction in China is decreasing gradually, but actually we have already made six lines which are profiting. These are um, Beijing to Tianjin Intercity Railway and the Beijing to Shanghai High-Speed Railway and Shanghai to Hangzhou and also Shanghai to Nanjing, Hangzhou to Nanjing and the Guangzhou to Shenzhen. From that point of view, uh, the revenue that's coming from user fees is not going to cover the construction costs of more of the new lines. So other forms of revenue would need to be seen. This could include maybe land use development, the land development around stations, mm -hmm. to actually ensure the financial sustainability of yeah. those low density corridors. Uh, it's not only uh, economically. I think it has a social economic benefits for many upstream and downstream industries, as well as for the people in the area where connected by the high-speed railways, especially in the eastern part of China. And also in other part of China as well, in central China and in western China. High-speed railways are changing how people travel while being convenient and affordable. In China, people can buy high-speed rail tickets anytime, anywhere through apps. High-speed rail shortens the distance of the cities travel becomes easier and more enjoyable. Take the Baoji Lanzhou high-speed railway, for example. It travels between Baoji in Shanxi province and Lanzhou in Gansu province, covering 401 kilometers in total and connecting the last kilometer of China's east-west high-speed railway. Following its opening, the journey from Lanzhou to Beijing Shanghai and Guangzhou forms a preliminary transport circle of 9 to 11 hours. Setting off with a high-speed train in Shanghai, one may enjoy juicy meat dumplings in Shanghai in the morning, pita bread soaked in lamb soup in Xi'an at noon, and beef noodles in Lanzhou in the evening. The launch of high-speed railways has changed urban development models and promoted regional economic development. Take the Beijing-Guangzhou High-Speed Railway, for example. According to statistics from China's High-Speed Railway Study Report, the two cities see a 7% annual increase in travelers and 14% increase in economic exchanges. In southwest China, following the opening of the Nanning-Guiyang-Guangzhou High-Speed Railways, 
The building of a Guangdong Guangxi Guizhou high speed railway economic belt has become a shared goal of the regions. Between 2014 and 2017, the 13 cities and autonomous prefectures along the route saw a 29% increase in the GDP, and the per capita income of residents along the route also rose sharply. 80% of the major cities, population of 2 million and over, mm -hmm. will have a high-speed railway connection. But there are, as you say, in the western part, very few metropolitan areas yes, exist. Yes, and you know? it's like remotely distributed. So, I think what this is basically calling for is um, to have some kind of hubs mm -hmm. in this part of the country, in the western and central part, mm -hmm. develop a few hubs to collect passengers from the outlining areas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then bring them to the high-speed railway network. I think that can be connected with the, the national cent uh, central cities, yes. yeah, such as uh, Xi'an and Chengdu. You can, as you can see, they're, they're all in the uh, in western part, and they're also acting as the hub of the... Right. Yeah, yeah. Xi'an, for example, can serve the western part. Mm -hmm. A lot of the outlying provinces can be there. Uh, and also, as you know, the central government has this concept of city clusters, where different cities come into major mega regions, metropolitan yeah, yeah. areas. Something like satellite cities? Satellite, yes. Urban agglomerations? Uh, urban agglomerations, yeah, to, yeah. so to create that. I think High Speed Railway can play a major role in developing uh, city clusters in China yes. because mm -hmm. especially if you connect the main city mm -hmm. and the outlining the satellite city with a suburb railway system, mm -hmm. that could create a better is, integration of the economy yeah. and the regions. High-speed railways are a vibrant image of China's equipment production. To date, China's high-speed railway products and technology have been exported to nearly 100 countries and regions on six continents. According to statistics, China's railway technology has begun collaboration with over 40 countries and regions in railway planning, design, and construction. China's high-speed railways are heading not only to farther places, but also into the future. One-card access, facial recognition admission, automatic departure, and automatic stop. Over the past decade, China's high-speed railways have never stopped exploring. Next, not only will we see faster high-speed trains in China, but also double-decker high-speed trains high-speed trains with adjustable gauges, and even the inconceivable, fully automated high-speed trains. In the future, combining smart technology, China's high-speed railways will continue to charge forward. So that means if this is on the tracks in the future, I can book my next trip, I can watch a movie while I'm sitting in my seat. You think in the future I could take this right back to my hometown in South Africa? I can't wait for that day to come.